Okay, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Um, my name is Stefan Seider, I'm a professor uh, at the Faculty of Informatics and I will guide you through this evening. Um, and uh, there are two short welcome speeches um, and the first uh, is by um, Vice Rector for Research, Professor Johannes Fröhlich. I give the floor to you, please. Thank you very much, Professor Seider. Um, well, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. Um, I've heard a lot of uh, lecture halls around have also been uh, booked out by, by the video uh, uh, transmission. Actually, uh, it's amazing to see this lecture hall full. I have never seen it that full before. <laughs> uh, I'm chemist, so I never see full lecture halls because we are a really small crowd as compared to the informatics guys. Uh, actually, I was very uh, uh, lucky that I'm still in person because I, I came late from an appointment and otherwise I would not have made my way, my way through all of you. I would have been filtered out, as the chemist would say. Okay, um, this is a, uh, an opening lecture. It's the first lecture of the so-called Vienna Gödel lecture series, which is uh, a new uh, series of lectures introduced in the Faculty of Informatics. Uh, of course, uh, as we all know, uh, coined after the famous um, uh, mathematician Gödel. And this lecture will uh, have, uh, um, I hope, as many as today uh, attraction uh, to the future lectures. So actually, uh, today we have Professor Knut, and this is something which will be a sort of, uh, a sort of landmark even to the uh, next lectures, because uh, uh, I think uh, a fuller hall will not be possible. So maybe you can book more uh, lecture halls for the for the video transmissions. This this maybe can then be a, a comparison to even more uh, so to say attraction. Uh, the um, this uh, series of lectures um, will uh, uh, so to say uh, give a, a, a proof or attitude of the TU Vienna to attract uh, um, uh, famous and renowned scientists from outside to have a, a forum for uh, for for uh, for scientists worldwide. And uh, uh, this time, um, uh, uh, with Professor Knut, we have, uh, so to say, the Nobel laureate of the Informatics and Mathematics uh, Society. Uh, and um, this is something which we are very proud uh, on. And so um, uh, this is an, another opportunity uh, to, um, uh, to um, um, put our university and to put our, uh, our lectures into the, into the, uh, into the show window uh, of, uh, of a scientific community. Um, what I also have heard is uh, that uh, Professor Knut has a special, a special type of lecturing, which is not the typical uh, lecturing uh, like uh, many of us do, reading and, and, and uh, PowerPointing something to the audience. It's a question answer play. So we are very interested in uh, how this is uh, 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 to be performed here, to say it. It's more or less a performance, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would say, um, I would, uh, well, I'm, I'm um, tempted to say with, uh, with Monty Python that today we expect something completely different. And so we are looking very much forward to your lecture. And uh, before, the floor is yours, I guess the uh, Dean of Informatics will also say a few words to you. Thank you very much for your uh, attendance and uh, I'm very proud and I'm very happy to see this uh, lecture hall full so I guess a lot of photos have been made to see that also uh, full lecture halls are uh, <laughs> usual at universities. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, as Dean of the Faculty of Informatics here at uh, the Vienna University of Technology, it is my privilege uh, to welcome you all to this prestigious event, the very first lecture of the Vienna Gödel Lecture Series. What is this lecture series? We have decided to invite once a year a key player on the international stage of computer science to share his or her profound insights with us. The purpose of this series is to show the crucial role 
that um, computer science plays in shaping and forming today's information and knowledge society and in solving its complex problems. The lecture series is, as uh, Weisrechter Fröhlich already mentioned, named after Kurt Gödel, the famous logician who lived and worked here in Vienna for a large number of years before he emigrated to the United States where he continued his work at Princeton. So you could ask why did we name the Faculty of Informatics new lecture series after a logician? Let me answer this question by quoting Georg Gottlob who should, who should be here somewhere in the audience. I do not see him, maybe in another lecture room. Um, and who modified a famous quotation by Clausewitz. Georg Gottlob said, computer science is the continuation of logics by other means. So, as you can see, logical aspects of computer science are, amongst others, a strong focus of our faculty's work. Donald Knut, our speaker today, comes from an equally renowned university as Kurt Gödel, from Stanford. And I can't imagine a better first speaker in our new lecture series because he is one of the most respected and influential computer scientists of our times. And he is a real inspiration. What makes him such an admirable personality? He has a broad spectrum of professional interests. On the one hand, he is an outstanding scientist, having made fundamental contributions in different fields of theoretical computer science, for which he received the prestigious Turing Award. On the other hand, in creating the typesetting system Tech, he also made a, a significant practical contribution to the world of science and research that we could not imagine living without. As you can see, your reputation goes before you, Mr. Knut, and we are pleased to start our lecture series with a speaker who is so well appreciated by the interested public. We are very glad to have you here. And now I'll hand back to Stefan Seider, who will say a few more words about our speaker. Thank you. Okay. Um, it is a great privilege and honor to introduce uh, our today's speaker, uh, Donald Knut. He's clearly one of the most preeminent computer scientists of our time. And as it was already mentioned, he uh, got a remarkable number of awards, uh, among them the ACM Turing Award, but many other awards. And it's hard to say enough about Knuth. And my introduction will be grossly incomplete, of course. Because uh, Knuth made uh, many contributions, and uh, in fact, he is uh, simultaneously pursuing many different careers, where each of them would be a proud lifetime achievement for other people. Just to name a few uh, things. Uh, Knuth is considered as the father of algorithm analysis. He made groundbreaking work already almost five decades ago uh, on string parsing, which lays the found foundations for today's modern uh, compilers. Um, Knuth is the rare theoretician who writes uh, many lines of code every day. So uh, Knuth combines in a unique way theory and practice. Knuth published a large number of important books, most notably 
the multi-volume work, The Art of Computer Programming. And uh, as it was already mentioned, Knuth uh, cre is the creator of the uh, computer typesetting system Tech, which is used throughout the uh, mathematics and computer science community. And actually, it shapes uh, the culture and our daily work. And a very special feature of all of his work is that it celebrates the beauty and elegance of mathematics and algorithms. So, um, today, uh, Knuth will give one of his famous uh, all questions answered uh, sessions. So, uh, please line up at the microphones to the left and the right, and uh, we will take questions um, alternatingly from each side. May I also ask you, because there might be many people who want to ask questions, please ask every questioner, please ask only one question. Um, and yeah, so please join me welcoming, welcoming Donald Knuth. honored to be here and asked to, to, uh, to start this lecture series and, uh, and uh, also I'm uh, quite happy to see my friend Heinz Zemanek in the front row. <laughs> this is my first trip to Vienna and uh, how can I summarize it? Uh, I, uh, I, I, I guess uh, I, 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 I'm mesmerized by, by Vienna. Now, um, uh, we don't have a Franz Mesmer uh, lecture series uh, these days uh, because his, his research uh, on, on um, uh, animal magnetism has been uh, discredited over the years. Uh, but, uh, but he is another uh, uh, original Viennese scientist uh, uh, 18th century, and and, uh, and 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 his name gets into the language. And uh, anyway, I, I I'm blown away by uh, by by the things that that I've, I've experienced here. Uh, 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 by contrast, uh, I imagine Kurt Gödel's work will never be discredited. And so, uh, uh, 200 years from now, uh, 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 let's hope that the world survives and we have uh, continuing uh, uh, Gödel lectures. Um, the other thing I, I, I guess I can mention is that on Sunday I went to a uh, a wonderful organ concert at uh, St. Peter's Church, uh, and it consisted of improvisation, uh, where the where the organist uh, took written themes. Uh, uh, the people in the audience would would submit a theme, and uh, and during the hour he he uh, uh, improvised on those themes. Uh, in eight different ways, and and it was it was uh, absolutely fantastic uh, uh, the different styles that he had uh, for, for the for these. So I'm going to try to improvise today. I don't know if I can match his his skill, uh, but maybe you have even more than eight questions because I I figure the only reason there's so many people here is because you you want all your questions answered. So so, <laughs> so, so let's uh, let's go. Okay, uh, we'll start here at the this side, please. Okay, Professor Knuth, I want you to consider the following situation. <laughs> no, no, hold on. Um, a, a talented young person is planning to enter university, but he or she is not yet sure what to study. And that person takes studying computer science into consideration. Now, the person asks you therefore, why should I study computer science? And what are the, let's say, three most important things or results I can learn in doing so? What would you answer? 
Okay, so, all right. I hope this isn't, every question isn't gonna be to ask me for the top three things of a <laughs> uh, in, 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 in a You don't need to state because, the top three. Yeah, be, because it's, it's really hard to, I, I, I do this kind of ranking, but but you know I, I, the first three that come to me or something like that might be okay. But 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 don't say what are the top three results of all computer science or something like that. Okay, so so, so in the first place, uh, uh, computer science uh, is different from a lot of other fields uh, and similar to other, other fields in that it's really based on on a, a, a person's uh, uh, way of thinking. Uh, rather than on a person's desires and what problems to solve. Uh, uh, there's a certain, uh, uh, the, I, I, I think uh, uh, I learned when I was, in, when I was an undergraduate, uh, there was no such thing as a computer science major, but, but uh, so anyway, during my freshman year of college, uh, uh, I saw a computer behind a, uh, a glass window and, Somebody explained it to me, and 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 that clicked with me, and uh, I find that all over, uh, you know, for, for more than 50 years now, I I, I see people for whom uh, uh, th th there's a, a strong resonance with the way they view uh, knowledge and and organize knowledge in their heads, and the uh, 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 and the ability to write computer programs that make computers uh, uh, do cutting edge things. So, um, uh, to me, computer science is for the it is for that class of, of 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 people who have this way of thinking, and for for uh, uh, for brevity, I'll call it uh, being a geek. Uh, okay, I mean, I uh, it, the word geek uh, and nerd and things are, are not uh, uh, well defined in dictionaries uh, yet, but. But uh, but but geek is 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 becoming more chic uh, in late years, and so and so I have to admit that when uh, when a man in Britain uh, three years ago called me geek of the week, I I, I was proud. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, but any, anyway, uh, it's up, it, it's something that that you have, and uh, by the time you're you're 17 or 20 or something, uh, or, or you don't, it's not something that you. That if you just work harder, you'll be more of a geek. I, uh, uh, in, in, in my sense of of, of uh, having a, uh, a special talent for uh, for resonating with computers, um, and so so I, I find that uh, people in in uh, uh, over the years uh, tended to be one out of fifty people had this way of thinking, um, and uh, and and they discovered it. Uh, uh, well, I made a. I'm not sure uh, the, how true this is, but it's, a, it's something like, uh, uh, you know, so, some people when they're teenagers, they discover that they're gay, and other people discover that they're geeks. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and maybe both, or whatever. but anyway, the, the, uh, the, the thing is, uh, uh, it's, it, 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 it's not something that, uh, you, can, you, can, you can have lots of different kinds of intelligence, but there's this one kind that really works uh, for computer science. And, and these are the people who discovered each other when computer science became uh, uh, part of the world scene in the university. Uh, 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 in 1964, there were no computer science departments in the world. By 1970, there were almost every university had one. And the only way I, I, I account for this r rapid rise is that the... Uh, the people who had this way of thinking discovered each other once there was a name for their field, because because we get together and we can, we, we we tell the same kind of jokes. We we describe uh, uh, we use the same analogies. We uh, things we, we can have high high bandwidth conversations with each other. People who think th this peculiar way that we have, and so I, I look at myself as being someone who uh, who writes books for geeks. Um, uh, somebody has to ha has to write for uh, you know for, for, for this small audience. And now the kids of today are exposed much more to uh, uh, to, to computer-like things when they're young than, than than ever before. So maybe this two percent is going to change. But whatever it is. So so. But my my main answer to your question though is if if you find that that this is the kind of thing that really is natural for you that this is. Uh, there's a need for you in the world, and, and you're always going to find something interesting to do. Um, and uh, uh, we find a lot of people uh, 
uh, you know, they start out majoring in something else, uh, maybe art, uh, and, and, but then they discover uh, uh, when they when they are asked to write a computer program, they they find that you know it's really uh, it, it, it's really them. It's re it's really got their name on it. So uh, so, so then they they, they 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 switch over. But but you don't know. Uh, 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 but it's not something that you say. Well, if I only uh, work a little harder, I'm going to be a, a great programmer or something like that. It, unless you already have this this. Uh, this, uh, that's my opinion. <clears throat> now, the, the top. F the, the, okay, well, the, I, I, I guess I already answered enough of, uh, <laughs> um, of that one. But uh, but once you have this this way of thinking, then then you then uh, 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 there's a zillion things you can do with it uh, because there's uh, everywhere you look, you'll, you'll see something that hasn't been done right yet with computers. And so, uh, uh, and you also uh, get, get a lot of pleasure just just using your uh, uh, this talent that you have. <clears throat> okay, okay. thank you. Slide. Next question from the other side, please. Professor Nuth, um, you are known for uh, opposing uh, software patents or um, intellectual property for algorithms as such. Uh, can you give us a brief outline of your arguments? And does your position imply that uh, open source projects should be prevalent in the industry? Yeah. Okay. So th this is this is a very interesting issue about uh, about software patents. Uh, I I, um, uh, it, I I'm not sure what the situation is in Europe now. I know that uh, it keeps fluctuating also in America. Um, <clears throat> during the uh, uh, for for a long time. It was it was said that you couldn't patent uh, an algorithm because it's it's mathematical and mathematics is give, is it, it's something that uh, uh, you know uh, who, who was it said that God gave us the integers or something like this you can't you, you can't imagine getting a patent on a uh, on the, on the number five uh, you know, so, uh, 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 <clears throat> so um, Software and algorithms were thought of as being something mathematical, but then, then okay, I don't want to go into a long discussion. But then people embedded it in a machine, and then and so on. Um, I uh, I believe that if uh, if software patents were were prevalent at the, in 1980 when I worked on tech, I never would have been able to do the project. Because because there wouldn't have been any way to get permissions for, 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 from all the kind of algorithms that, that go into things, so I I I, I think uh, having uh, having too much too, too many things patented uh, holds back uh, all kinds of uh, 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 all, all kinds of innovation actually. So the idea of uh, the word patent in English means t uh, to make public. And so the idea of patenting is, like, oh, you don't keep it, a, you don't keep it a trade secret. At least you explain what you did, so that after a limited amount of time, somebody is able is able to use the idea. Um, now, uh, the, the the big problem for me is is where you have have trivial patents, um, where where, where a, a problem that I would assume any student would be able to do as a as an exam problem, uh, uh, some, somebody actually. Uh, uh, decides that uh, he, he's going to get a patent on that particular method, um, and and so uh, uh, that's a problem. On the other hand, when when you have a really uh, uh, a, a, a really subtle breakthrough that that, uh, uh, that 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 took a lot of genius and thought and and work, uh, certainly that I, I think I uh, you should you should be entitled to uh, have. Uh, have credit for it and, and, and limit, uh, uh, you know, you pe people should, should uh, uh, if, if, if you want, uh, they, they, should, they should compensate you if you're using your idea, at least for a certain amount of time. Um, otherwise, you'd keep it secret. So, so, so the idea of patents is, isn't inherently bad. It's just that the, finding the right level as to when, when you patent and when you don't. Um, is, is is the question? Even even this question I I, I brought up about uh, an, an integer. Uh, 
could you patent a positive integer of a certain kind? And, and uh, I can actually imagine a scenario when it would, when it would be a, a reasonable to, to do this. Let, let, let's suppose that, that, uh, uh, that there's a certain number that uh, uh, maybe it's a, a, a thousand digit number. And, it, and, uh, and we know that if we had this number, uh, we, could, we, could, we could answer all questions. I mean, you could feed in your question and, and take the greatest common divisor with this number and multiply by, or take a square root of something and put into a formula, give you the answer, okay. Or, or, or to a large number of important questions, it would, it, it, it would encode some, uh, some deep property. And, and the only way to compute this 1,000 digit number uh, would be uh, to, you know, to build massive, massive computers and spend years and years, and then you get this number, okay. Shouldn't you be entitled to patent this number after you've done this? Uh, you know, it, the, 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 just the fact that it's an integer doesn't mean that necessarily that it's not worth, uh, uh, it, it, not, not something uh, uh, worth, uh, 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 that, that's something that, that you might not own uh, yourself. Uh, and, and, and we know fr uh, that the whole idea of uh, the difference between does something exist or, or can you find it easily is, is a big thing uh, in, uh, in the difference. Okay, now the second part of your question was about open source software. And I believe uh, uh, that open source software is, is, uh, uh, has, has all kinds of great advantages. Um, and uh, uh, the, the only problem that I have is, is that uh, still when I get a new computer, uh, <coughs> Uh, it doesn't work with the dry, with the current graphics cards, and and, <laughs> uh, and um, so I have to I have to always buy a computer that's that's two years old. That's that, that's fine, uh, because, but um, uh, the uh, uh, so, so I, I I put tech in the public domain. Uh, and, but, but, I, but I don't issue it with the, with the uh, new public license. Uh, uh, I, I, I have a slight uh, twist on that uh, because the, the, uh, the, the general license that comes with most open source software says anybody can freely modify this. And um, I don't want anybody to take tech and, and, and modify it unless they change the name and call it something else. So, so, so anybody can, can, can take the code for tech and look at it and say, uh, but it would be better if he had, 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 had tweaked this one little thing. Um, and, uh, uh, and I, I don't forbid that. I just say, don't you dare call this tech then. <laughs> then you make up another name for it. Because I want, I, 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 want to, I want to have a fixed point on which people can build so that they can trust that, that they do something now uh, they don't have to worry when it's up, when the, when somebody upgrades tech. It never gets upgraded. It it it, it stays it stays fixed. And, and I take personal responsibility uh, for, for uh, the, the way tech works. Is uh, uh, um, on the day I die, it's tech is frozen forever, uh, <laughs> and every bug it has is it, it is is a feature. And, and, and uh, it, it's supposed to stay that way. Nobody's, nobody's ever supposed to change that bug, all right? Uh, uh, but they can have something else which they call, you know, better tech or, you know, uh, <laughs> as, long as, as long as it's, uh, uh, as there's some uh, idea as what it means to have an unchanged version, uh, I, I, I go along with the uh, public license, but, but not with the idea that, it, that everybody should, uh, sh should just keep uh, l letting the crowd keep, keep changing it. Um, I don't want it to diverge at all, okay? Thanks. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Next question from the side, please. Professor, how do you envision the future of artificial intelligence? Do you think uh, future intelligent computers will be just uh, pseudo-intelligent machines, or will our minds maybe sometimes be extended by machines, similar to the ones that were described in Isa Asimov's The Last Question? Yeah, so um, I, I'm not sure that what your reference is, but, uh, but I, uh, I, I, um, 
uh, I caution you that uh, uh, the worst, the, the worst, my, I have absolutely no track record of predicting the future. So, so, so you, ask me, you ask me what I think about the future, I can tell you, but, but I can also tell you, uh, you know, my opinion is probably even worse than if you ask any random other person. Um, uh, because uh, once a, um, uh, an interviewer asked me, you know, what was the most surprising thing that happened in computer science, and immediately I rattled off 20 things. And then she, then she said, and what was the least surprising thing? What, 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 what was it about computer science that, that, you, that you predicted? And I was flabbergasted. For five minutes, I couldn't think of a single thing. <laughs> okay. So now, with respect to artificial intelligence, I, I, I personally think that, uh, that your second alternative is what's, it, is, is what's going to happen, that, that we're going to gradually uh, uh, have all these different aids that, that, that we incorporate into our daily lives and maybe even into our uh, you know, gadgets that, we, that, are, that become attached to our, uh, uh, to our body. Uh, e even more than Google Glass is attached. Uh, you know, I mean, so, uh, you know, bionic man, woman, uh, is probably, uh, is almost certainly going to be, going to be happening and there will be, but we'll, so, so we'll use, uh, we'll use things more and more to enhance our, our abilities as, uh, as uh, a lot of other important gurus have been saying for years and years. Uh, goodness, I, I'm blanking on his name. I see, him, I see him in front of me, but he invented the mouse and everything. You know, he, that was his, his whole idea of enhancing uh, uh, human. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, next question, please, from the other side. Yes. Uh, first of all, I, I hope that you won't pass away too soon, because then I think that will be the first uh, 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 time when uh, a system ha will have an infinite version number, and I don't know whether people have thought about that problem. And <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the number pi will be the final version number of yeah. tech. Uh, uh, should we try to enumerate 100 digits after the decimal point? I don't know how we can do it. But uh, my serious question, or rather a little bit tongue-in-cheek question. Uh, many years ago, or from Mr. Zemanek's viewpoint, probably only a few years ago, I bought The Art of Computer Programming. I was very impressed by these very thick volumes. Um, and since then, I've been wondering, um, what are we really doing? Is it computer science, or rather computer art? Uh, or partially translated to Greek, uh, computer tech? Right, okay, so th this, is a, this is a question that uh, <coughs> uh, I, uh, I I could have almost asked you to ask me because I have a, a good answer to it. Uh, uh, I, that, the subject of my Turing lecture uh, was was this very question: What's the difference between science and art? And uh, and also then uh, well, there are other uh, other words that we can put in. So so the I. I I looked into the thing in different languages. So, similarly, in German, Kunst uh, uh, has has different meanings historically, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, it's it tends to to distinguish things that are in nature from things that are created by people. So, so the uh, uh, something more artful, the least, the, the less it was pre produced by an by by an auto, by an algorithm, or or, 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 or by a natural process. Uh, so, so, so the the, th the things that w when when we use thinking, uh, we go beyond science. But science is the things that it, it, it is uh, knowledge that 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 we understand enough to formulate. And uh, I, to make it more precise, I say science is something we understand well enough to, to, to program, well, well enough to, expl to, uh, to explain to a computer. And art is everything else, that, uh, the things that we add uh, uh, to, to knowledge, but we don't know uh, exactly why it's true or, 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 or what makes it happen. And, and uh, so uh, as, as science advances, uh, uh, you might say, well, it catches up to art because, because, because you know, okay, people uh, could play chess, but then uh, we build better and better programs that, that now they can they can play chess against the human. Um, but uh, 
still, uh, in almost every endeavor, uh, at, as we learn more and, and make more things into science, uh, art also advances, and, and, and we also get other ideas as to what to, as to what to do next. So, so that's the way I look at the different now. Now, that, uh, what, what, what's the name for a field? Uh, or computer science in in German I, I, informatique. It, uh, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Uh, you know, you know it, it sort of sidesteps that issue. Uh, Niklas Wirth's uh, inaugural uh, when he when he gave his first lecture as a professor at Zurich, ETH, he he, uh, he he called it computer Wissenschaften. Um, but uh, the, the the word informatic has has, has caught on. Um, uh, a rose by any other name is still a rose. Uh, uh, I, I, I like to, uh, uh, you know, so, so whatever it's called, uh, uh, I, I know what it means. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't want, I don't bother arguing anymore as to exactly how scientific every part of it is. It's the same as the word mathematics. Uh, you know, originally uh, it, it had some meaning in Greek, but we know what mathematics is now. So I, 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 I use it as a, a as a concept, uh, a, a, you know, as a, as an identifier that uh, that that I can use when I'm talking to somebody else and they know what I'm talking about. But but I don't really uh, 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 try to parse it in, into individual components anymore. <clears throat> Thank you. Next question from this side, please. Professor Knuth, is there a result or accomplishment in computer science that someone else made, but you really wish you had made? And if yes, <laughs> why do you really wish you had made it? Hmm. No, okay, so I, 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 uh, the answer to that has to be yes. So, uh, 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 but, uh, no, I mean, it, okay, when I started writing The Art of Computer Programming, in fact, I had, I had zero results of my own. But, but my motivation was that I saw the people who had, had uh, uh, they, they published their results, but, uh, uh, but, but other people were unaware of it. So, so there, were no, there were no books about this. On the other hand, if I, if I found two papers on, on, on similar subjects, there would be paper, uh, paper by per person A and paper by person B. Um, I found that these people uh, were so proud of their own method that they didn't see what, uh, the advantage of the other person's insight. So, so, so I can't, couldn't imagine person A writing a, writing a book that would fairly describe both method A and method B, and, and similarly for the other person. So I figured, okay, uh, I, I like to write. Uh, I, I worked on, uh, uh, you know, as a, on student paper and things like that when I was in college. Uh, so, I, uh, so I said, okay, I'll write a book that, that is unbiased. I, I don't, you know, so, so I didn't invent anything, but, uh, but, I, but, but that, that's an advantage, because they, cause then I can, I, I can be balanced between uh, you know, I can present both methods A and B, and I can say, uh, I can present w why, why B has certain advantages or disadvantages from the standpoint of A and, and so on. And, and um, okay, so that was my original motivation for starting to, work, uh, to write a book. Uh, well then, uh, as time went on, uh, I'm writing this book and, I, I, and, I, and I'm seeing, uh, you know, lots of interesting ideas that the, the authors were unaware that if you plugged in this method into this, that they could get some more results. So naturally, I started discovering things myself, and then, um, and then I, so then I couldn't be unbiased anymore, and so I, so so, so I, I couldn't write a decent book anymore. Uh, but I still kept trying. Now, uh, I, I'm I'm not really uh, that competitive a person where I say, oh, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, too bad I didn't discover that because I really want that glory. Uh, it's more, it's it's more like uh, why didn't I discover that? Because because then I could have done something else. Um, and uh, uh, you know, so so when when whenever I see a a, a beautiful result, uh, I I I'm just I, I I just love the fact that it's there. And I and I and my joy is to try to tell the story as to why it's so beautiful. And and you know and try to try to. Uh, 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 
explain it in, a, in an elegant way that, that ties it in with, uh, with, other, with, with other kind of knowledge. Uh, and so, and so that, that's where I get my kicks, uh, but, but not so much from, from being the first to, uh, uh, to solve a certain problem. Thank you. Um, is there a question over there? Yeah. I have a transatlantic question. Transatlantic. Transatlantic. What is the difference between computing as established in ACM or in your person and information processing established in IFIP and Professor Semanek? Okay, well, um, I, uh, the word information uh, covers lots of different things and, and uh, I, I'm thinking that uh, information is more like the, is more static, uh, uh, while computing is more dynamic, transforming, uh, transforming things. So, so I, so, so the, uh, the the basic uh, model I have is 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 this: uh, we have uh, we have we have abstract things and we have concrete things. Like in in, in mathematics, you have uh, an abstract concept like a triangle or a circle, and then you have actual uh, uh, buildings that, that, that are in the shape of a triangle or a circle or something like this. And, uh, in, it, and we have the abstract concept called an algorithm, uh, which des describes a sequence of, of steps that we can go through to, uh, uh, to transform uh, input into output, say. And, uh, and then there's a concrete thing called a program which is, which is a representation of an algorithm in, in some precise language uh, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that makes the, 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 uh, the, the program uh, uh, exist or something, while, while the, a the actual a algorithm is, is, is out there. Many different programs describe the same, essentially the same algorithm. And, and similarly, information to me is an abstract concept uh, that, uh, that 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 means uh, that wh whose whose uh, concrete uh, representation is data. So 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 information is something that might that that might represent uh, a, a uh, uh, the amount of light or or, 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 or temperature, the size of something, um, <coughs> the. the uh, People position, the state of the universe, something like that. But that's information, abstract. But then, what, then data means we've represented the information in some, in some precise language, uh, and, and, and with, with maybe some alphabet or some, some some rules for representation, and that's that, and that's concrete. Now, information processing is the transformation of information, and and so informatique to me uh, is not just information. Uh, but it's the it, it's it's the uh, the idea of, uh, of of doing something with the information uh, and, and not just having it. You know, so so algorithm uh, is is the way I look at the, at, at, uh, at, at I like the word computing or, or computer science uh, because it talks it it has this aspect of the of, of the dynamic. Uh, uh, Change of, of information, but there, you know, I don't, I don't really insist on uh, on, on one being much, much, much better than the other. <clears throat> Does somebody have a trans-Pacific question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, even if it's not such a question, please. Good evening. Um, I would like to ask you um, what big challenges in computer science or IT you see where we should be working on, so where you would wish that there would be uh, progress or yeah. which, which are promising? Yeah, okay. Well, I see, I, I, I really see, see challenges uh, uh, everywhere. I mean, if I walk around uh, at Stanford from, from office to office, I can think of, of important challenges that those professors are doing, so I don't want to slight one, one thing over another. I mean, uh, certainly, uh, uh, if, if, you know, if I walk out, out my door, uh, I first come to Dan Boney's office, and so I say, oh, yeah, security, that's, uh, you know, cryptography, there's all kinds of, of important challenges there. Uh, 
Um, you know, I go a little further, and I and I find uh, you know you want to find good methods for uh, for, uh, for, for for good uh, uh, auctions, or you know, or, uh, or you, you want to find uh, uh, algorithms that are going to be that are going to be use, useful for decoding DNA and, and comparing genomes, and you want to you know you want to have algorithms that are going to be great for, for graphics um, and visualization of, 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 of data and robotics, et cetera, et cetera, and learning. So, so all of these things really, uh, not, nothing's been solved to, my, to, to the point where, where, we, where we're even uh, in, uh, anywhere near uh, 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 the, uh, the end of, the, uh, of a story in some sense. Um, I, I know that there are people at Stanford who, who, who spend their life studying um, Dante. You know, so here's, here's I don't know, how, was it 600, 700 years ago, uh, 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 Dante wrote these books, and there have been a lot of things written about that over time, and these people still spend their life. Uh, uh, well, I think so, maybe that's getting a little stale, but computer science, uh, uh, <laughs> Computer science and biology are, uh, to me, uh, are, are where the, it's an explosion of, all, of, 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 of important uh, challenges all, all the time. Um, and uh, uh, and the, I, I can't rate them, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it, even though I talked about this geekiness, this skill of computer science, there's many flavors of it, and so you, you, you have that combined with something else, and that, that suggests what kind of challenge is right for you. Um, and uh, uh, the thing that I wish uh, would happen most in America would be for, for better visualization of medical records and, 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 and data about diseases and things like this. Uh, uh, finding a way to, to, to do this uh, uh, that, that, that maps into the way human beings are, uh, are, 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 are uh, have been conditioned over the years. So we, I mean, we can see patterns when, when we see animated displays much better than when we see pie charts and things like this. And so, and so I'm, I, I, you know, I, I think that's uh, a, a really, I mean, of all the different areas I mentioned, that's the one that seems to be uh, furthest away from being achieved. Uh, even in, even partially to uh, to, to its potential. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Is there a question over there, or the, this side is winning? I don't. Know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I enjoy your research so much. My question today is the one about programming language design. So you're the author of Tech and the Web System. You have written many source codes in Algo, Pascal. You even published the source code in Intercal. And you also have been um, quoted to tell at the ACM Turing 100 banquet um, that Python is the only popular language which is not ugly. And um, so my question here is today, um, what are your personal criteria for what makes a programming language beautiful? Okay, so c criteria for a beautiful programming language uh, depends on the uh, on the programmer and uh, and, and the application. <laughs> so, so in other words, one one side doesn't doesn't fit all. You know, uh, uh, to me, the, the the best programming language is the one that matches. Uh, the intuition of the programmer, that, so, so that uh, uh, you can put your thoughts down uh, without having to translate into something that's not natural for you. Uh, but different programmers are, have, have quite different mentalities. So, I mean, some people love a functional style programming language, for example, or, or, or more, more declarative. Others want it to be imperative. I mean, so, you know, I, I, I. I, uh, uh, I I, I I never uh, uh, I, I, I I can use Haskell um, and and Lisp, but uh, but but I, I feel a little bit a little bit like a dog standing on hind feet uh, uh, when I'm doing that. Uh, when I use uh, when I use uh, C, it feels right. I, and I, but that's not you know I can't say other people are wrong. I do that. But when I use C plus uh, plus. 
I, I, I can't stand it. I, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, it just, it, it, you know, it, 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 the, 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 the way that the thing that does, doesn't go into my head at all. I, you say something is static, ex, uh, what, you know, what, what is this? Uh, uh, the, the less than sign uh, sometimes means a template, sometimes means less than, I, I, you know, it gets amb ambiguous. Um, and so it, it just doesn't, you know, but I'm sure that the people who designed these languages uh, did, did it because it was really right for them. Um, and uh, so, and then there's, there's different applications as well, <coughs> uh, languages. So, so um, I was asked uh, in the 60s uh, to, to write a paper about design of programming languages. And I started it, and I, I, and I, 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 and I uh, decided uh, that the best way to, uh, uh, to, to uh, say what was a good language was to, was to have an example of a bad language. Uh, but I didn't want to hurt any of my, the feelings of any of my friends, so I invented my own bad language. I called it, I called it BL1, bad language one. And, uh, in fact, it, it was, B, it was um, you know, it was, B, it was it BL, Backslash one. So, <laughs> okay. so, 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 um, uh, you know, so, so I, I, I defined it, and my, of course, also my definition was bad. Uh, uh, but, but, uh, uh, and then I, and, and then I, uh, uh, this was a language for string manipulation. Uh, another th thing about a language, of course, you have an application area that you, you know, what, what are you trying to do, um, and. Uh, uh, so I, I also defined another language that was supposed to be a good one called Stroll, string-oriented language. Okay, so I had that language one in Stroll, and I, and and then I was going to write up other things about uh, programming language design. But uh, but I never finished the paper in the 60s, and I, and uh, I, I guess I was worried that so somebody would implement this language. <laughs> uh, so uh, so uh, uh, two or three years ago. Uh, the, all my papers on programming languages were collected into a book, and I decided, okay, now is the time for me to get out my old notes. And so, uh, I don't know, chapter 13 of the, it, it, the book is called Selected Papers on Computer Languages, and, and chapter something or other is about uh, design of languages and includes BL1, and you can, you can take a look. Uh, uh, but th that sort of summarizes my opinions about uh, uh, ideas of good language design. And, uh, but just the fact that it works for me, though, is, doesn't mean that it's going to work for, for, for everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Good evening. Um, earlier on, you spoke about the type of thinking required to do computer science. Um, since uh, I'm a mathematics student, and you also wrote mathematics, like your book, uh, Concrete Mathematics, I was wondering if you think there is a difference between, between the type of thinking we yeah. required to do mathematics versus the type of thinking required to do computer science. Uh, yes, I do. Um, uh, but I, but I, uh, I argued with Bill Thurston about this for, for an hour and was it, unable to convince him. Um, uh, but Bill was, a, of course, a, a great mathematician, mathematician, and he died recently. Um, uh, so. Let, let me. By the way, there's also different kinds of mathematical thinking. So, uh, uh, take logic. Okay, we have Kurt Gödel. So, a lot of mathematicians groove with Kurt Gödel. Others don't. And, and uh, you know, there's there's geometry, uh, uh, algebra, uh, and analysis. You know, dip, and, and these are sli these are slightly different. The people who are good at one aren't necessarily good at the other. Um, and uh, uh, I, I myself am weak at, at geometry, um, but, but uh, uh, pretty good at algebraic things. Okay, so, so, so I, when I do mathematics, I, I, I do algebraic type of mathematics. Now, um, but, but I, 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 could feel, I, I could feel when I was, uh, when I was a math student, I, I could sort of feel when I was changing hats uh, you know, I, I, I was, I, I was, uh, there was no such thing as computer science, I, I'm a student, so I, you know, so I'm, I'm doing my PhD and I'm also 
you know, you know at, uh, teaching classes on Diophantine equations or something like this, but I, I'm, I'm doing research uh, uh, that's, that's about infinity stuff uh, where computers can't really uh, I c compute infinitely many things, but you know, but I, but I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reasoning about, uh, 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 you know, that you that you can't uh, uh, take infinite many open sets and make a closed set or something like this. Um, uh, in certain, so, so anyway, I was doing all I, I was doing that kind, you know, topology and so on, um, and, and and that was I, I was doing that with my mathematic mathematician's uh, cloak on, and then I would have my computer scientist cap on, you know, when I'm doing programs, and and uh, and so I I, 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 could, I could feel a difference, uh, I, and but I as I say I wasn't able to explain this to Bill Thurston what what the difference was. Um, uh, I, I, I distinctly remember though writing a paper. Um, it, it, and it, it was a problem connected with uh, <coughs> random number generation, but it's but it had something to do with uh, uh, this. When you when you're generating random numbers, uh, 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 one of the good ways is to have some magic co constant, and, and and you take your previous number and you multiply by this magic constant, uh, uh, and take the remainder with respect to some other magic constant, and then you get your, your next random number. And, uh, and, and, and the ratio between the two magic constants, if, 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 you, if you express it uh, as a continued fraction, which means uh, A over 1 plus B over 1 plus C over 1 plus, and so on, keep on going, get, get these numbers A, B, C, uh, that continued fraction, uh, if, if, if those numbers are all pretty big, then you've got a good random number, number generator. So, so I, I, I'm working on a, uh, on a mathematical problem that has to do with continued fraction expansions. And um, uh, so part of it, I'm, I'm, I'm using, I, 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 I'm being a mathematician and I'm using theories, the theorems that I learned in number theory uh, that, that are existence theorems instead of algorithm. Uh, but then I get stuck and, and, and I take it as far as I can. But then I start saying, oh, but now if I write a program for this, uh, then I then I have some invariant that's coming on, and then I understand. Then, then there's some relation between these numbers that I wouldn't have discovered if I'm with my mathematician thinking. So 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 then I you know so, so then my programming uh, 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 and, and my computer science uh, training comes along, and, and I get the problem a little further. Then I get stuck, and so then I go back and in mathematic mode, and. Uh, and, and, and took a little further, and, and, and in this particular paper, I, it, uh, it went through three or four iterations where each one I could sort of feel that I was that, that I was uh, changing per, changing personality somehow. Um, so now uh, I, there's no proof, but uh, 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 probably a better proof is is this: I I, I wrote this little book called Surreal Numbers, uh, which is a which is a uh, novelette uh, uh, about two characters who. Uh, who, who discover a, uh, a, a a stone tablet that contains axioms, uh, which which were uh, discovered by John Conway, uh, uh, and they and, and these two and these two axioms, it turns out, are enough to define not only the real numbers but also many many more numbers that go between the real numbers, like you, like you have uh, you have uh, <clears throat> not only one over infinity. Uh, but but you have one over square root of infinity and infinity to the pi power and and uh, you can add and subtract these numbers and and, and you get a complete system that uh, 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 that you can extend to complex real numbers and everything is beautiful, uh, it, it, uh, incredibly wonderful construction of of abstract mathematics comes out all only of, of two axioms and a few definitions of you know, how to define addition and so on. So um, I, I learned this this great mathematical theory from. Uh, from John Conway over lunch one day, and then it occurred to me it would be great to put this into a book. And uh, uh, the, uh, the characters in my book discover the theory for themselves and, and, and invent it. Okay, so this is the uh, it, so, so this book now has uh, been translated into uh, uh, I think twice into Czech, for example, in many different languages, including German. It's called Insel der Zahlen, um, and, uh, and and and. Uh, uh, it, uh, uh, I, 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 uh, uh, I, and I, I raise it now because it's kind of a litmus test as to, as, as to, it sort of represents 
of my mathematical personality rather than my computer science personality because it, the, the methods there are pretty much uh, purely mathematical and uh, I and so my computer science friends look at this book and say, well, Don, why did you waste your time doing this? While, the, while you know, the, the book uh, has been translated in all these other languages by mathematicians who, who, who are thinking about it in a mathematical way. So, so I, 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 I sort of think that's, a, that's kind of a proof that there's a difference between, <laughs> between these kinds of thinking. Yeah. Thank you very much. Is there a question over there? Uh, actually, I think you already what had should, one question. What should children learn in primary and secondary school about computing and information processing? Um, so, uh, the, the, uh, the best uh, answer I know for this is something called the, the uh, Beaver Project, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which you should look up on the web. It's, uh, 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 it was started by a, a woman named Valentina, somebody or other, in, um, in uh, uh, Lithuania and uh, and uh, and I think she's done a brilliant job. But but she's expo she's made a lots of of, uh, of materials available in in all, all kinds of languages, and it's it's spreading around the world now, especially in Europe. Okay, please, um, Professor Knust, um, how do you imagine the solution to the P versus MP problem? What? How do you imagine the solution? to the P versus NP problem. Oh, okay, so P equals NP is, 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 uh, is something that, uh, uh, I, I have a radical, uh, uh, kind of radical proposal, although uh, after I, after I uh, mentioned it, uh, 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 other people said, yeah, they, th they think actually, they, they were sort of thinking along the same lines. Uh, like um, uh, uh, Moshe Vardy, for example, agrees with me. Okay, so my idea is that P equals NP, but we'll never know why. <laughs> um, uh, in other words, so, so l let me explain. Uh, th there, exists, there, there exists polynomial time algorithms that will solve any NPR problem. However, the algorithm is, it just exists. It's nothing, it, it's out there. Uh, and 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 uh, and, th and maybe in a hundred years somebody will will prove that that it exists because there are only finitely many reasons why it doesn't exist, and and, and therefore uh, uh, it, it must be there. But 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 but, but that doesn't help us, uh, you know. It it uh, because we'll, it, it's even worse than this thousand-digit number that, that that we could compute. Uh, it, it, it you know it, it's one of these things that. Uh, uh, that uh, you know, it, 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 it says that there, there exists a, a number sufficiently large, which would have m magical properties, uh, uh, and uh, and and that might, you know, that's consistent with everything we know, um, and and it also uh, means that maybe that's not the right question: is is p equal n p? What we should really talk about is uh, which things can we. Can we reduce the problems that we, uh, for, uh, for which we do have an algorithm? Okay. So, so, so we we don't have to throw out our theory. Uh, we just have to reformulate it uh, uh, and and say these these things are 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 are, are knowably polynomial. <coughs> okay. Thank you. We take the next question over here, please. Hi. Um, are there any uh, structures in mathematics or computer science that surprised uh, you being equivalent to, an to another mathematical, mathematical structure or computer uh, structure in computer science like a uh, game of life being Turing complete or uh, like a finite automate is equivalent, equivalent to a regular language? Okay, so now you say the game of life is Turing complete and what was this about a regular what? And finite automata. Okay, a uh, 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 finite automaton is equivalent to regular language, and, and the general question is? Um, can, uh, uh, which structure surprised you that is equivalent to another structure? So, I, 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 I don't know if I, maybe Stefan. Can, can you think of any? <laughs> but, but what I'm saying, I mean, math and computer science advances by, 
by means of, of things that are equivalent to each other. I mean, that's why almost all theorems have an if and only if part to them. Uh, and so we say, if you, know, if, if you have this setup, that's equivalent to this setup. And, 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 and so mathematics advances. Uh, I mean, like I, I told about my experience going in this problem where I, where I could use my mathematical intuition up to a certain point, and then I used my computer science and, you know, and, yeah. and went further. So, yeah, so, so, so this is, uh, th and, and the more ways, the more different ways you have of looking at things, the, the, uh, uh, the, the more useful the concept is. Uh, uh, every, you know, it, uh, every, every time you have, have, have three or four ways to define an equivalent concept, it turns out that concept is really important because you can get at it and, 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 and do things with many different kinds of intuition. But maybe that's not your question. Yeah, my, my question was, which, which of the, these structures surprised you being equivalent? Surprised me most? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, no, okay. Um, the, uh, the game of life one. <laughs> I, I, I mean, because, okay, so people know the game of life. How, how many people know something about Conway's game of life? Oh, uh, wow, well, uh, okay. So, but any, but it's, it, it, it's a completely deterministic uh, situation. Uh, uh, with, with a very simple rule, so every uh, you, you imagine a universe that, that consists of an, of an infinite grid, and every uh, square of the grid either is, is occupied by a, uh, is either alive or dead, so occupied by a stone or not, um, and uh, and then uh, uh, at, at every unit of time, uh, 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 the universe changes, uh, 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 and 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 some cells. Uh, uh, stay alive, or uh, other other cells are born, uh, become alive, and others die. And the rule is is very simple. Uh, if, if if a cell is alive, then it's got to be um, uh, uh, of its eight neighbors. Uh, uh, you want uh, either two. You you want uh, either two or three to to be uh, uh, there. Uh, but if a cell is dead. Wait. Yeah. If a cell, is, uh, what you do is you. Okay. So, so you, what you do is you take the eight neighbors, and, and and you add up how many of them are alive, and then you then you add up your own score of uh, uh, one half if you if if you're alive, and if it's between two and a half, it, it, you know, two and a half, three and three and a half are the, are, are are the cases where. where where you're alive at the next step. Anyway, but it's, it, the point is it's completely deterministic, and so if, if there's too many live cells in a row, they die from congestion. And if there aren't enough, they die from starvation. But if there's just this balance where you have just about two neighbors, uh, uh, two and a half, three neighbors, then, uh, uh, th th then, it, then it, uh, it, it tends to survive. Okay, so at first, uh, well, almost all s such systems uh, seem to die out or, 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 or get into a loop. Um, but uh, uh, the game of life, uh, uh, but anyway, it's, it, it, it's completely deterministic, which means that, uh, uh, that there's no free will <coughs> involved. Uh, the, 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 the people who, the, the, the objects that live in this way uh, 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 live whether or not uh, uh, we, we simulate them on a computer. Um, it's it's just they're they're, they're there, uh, and uh, although people say that when they when they turn when they're simulating the game of life and they turn the machine off, uh, they feel a little bit moral uh, guilt because they because uh, you know this this configuration is never to be seen again. Um, but uh, okay, now so early on people discovered a glider. Which, which is a which is a, a, a simple pattern of four cells that are alive that that that, that skates around, uh, and, and, and every every uh, two, uh, four steps of time it moves. Every two steps of time it moves, and four steps it goes diagonally, and 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 so here was a case where at least th uh, uh, you you could. Uh, 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 show that uh, you, you would go out and uh, you, you start in one part of the universe, but it would actually affect arbitrarily far away. Okay, then they discovered a glider gun, which emits gliders very often, and out come more and more things. So you have more and more uh, th things coming alive. So you start out with a finite configuration, and eventually you get uh, 
uh, infinite configuration. So then it became a real surprise, though, that, that with the game of life, you could si simulate any Turing machine because you could, you could start gliders that would go, that would go bouncing back and forth, and, they, and, 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 and when they hit something else, they would start some, another reaction, could simulate any, any computation. And that, uh, uh, that uh, I, I say, uh, was, was a, a great big surprise. Uh, while finite state automata being equivalent to uh, regular languages. Uh, uh, no, I don't think that was anywhere near <laughs> surprising. Uh, now, there was an advance in the game of life two weeks ago uh, that uh, somebody used a computer at Cambridge and found a glider reflector. And this, is a, and, and it's, this is a still life. It's a, it's a small configuration, about 20 by 30, uh, of things that, that just sit there and don't move. Uh, from generation to generation, but when a glider comes along uh, and, and gets close to it, all of a sudden this life, this, this thing starts to uh, sort of explode and do, do things. And 20 steps later, however, it has re, re, reassembled itself and into exactly the way it was before, but the glider is off here uh, at a 90 degree angle from, from where it was before. And, and people had, had uh, uh, been, been saying that you, there was going to be no small glider reflector like this, but, uh, but it was found uh, at the end of a April. So, so um, and, and I'm planning next week actually to, uh, to find a better one using SAT uh, 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 construction because I, uh, uh, because I think it's it going to be a nice example from my book. But anyway, uh, the game of life is, is a particularly interesting case because now, now we have uh, th these, these uh, these other constructions, uh, uh, it, it looks like more amazing things can be done. I think these are, you know, it, it's not really uh, 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 affecting the stock market or anything uh, to have a better algorithm for game of life, but, but you know, uh, it, in a way it, it, it does ha it have a big economic impact because it's estimated that during the 1970s, uh, more computer time was spent simulating the game of life than anything else. Uh, 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 everybody had a, 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 a everybody had a special switch so that when their boss came by, they would they would change the computer so that it didn't show that they were that they were simulating the game of life. It's quite fascinating to watch the, this pattern. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, so actually, I think we are co coming slowly to the end of the okay. session. However, as you know, uh, not all people could fit into this lecture room, and so this lecture is live broadcast to another room. Yeah. And the people there sent a question. Okay. It's a bit of a meta question. Meta that question. Is, <laughs> okay. If you were a student here in Vienna, what would be your question to Donald Tusk? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a pretty good question. I, uh, uh, I mean, you know, there's this, there's something called meta game, which that which the the first player his move is to choose a game, and you know, and so the first player says, "Let's play meta game." You know, so, uh, uh, um, okay. What is the uh, best restaurant? But uh, well, yeah, that's great. So uh, no, I I, I think. Uh, uh, okay, but uh, I, 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 let me see, I... It's a, a, a tricky question. What? It's a tricky, it's a tricky question. I said, okay, well, let's say what, um, uh, what, what's my, my best advice to a student in, in, in Vienna, you know, and, and, uh, and I would say uh, uh, follow your own uh, instincts and, and don't just do something because other people Expect you uh, to like something, or because something is fashionable or or or, or, or trendy. Um, uh, if you think something is it is important, even though it's not trendy at the time, uh, I, I I would say go for it, um, even if you don't have tenure. Okay. Um, I think that it's a, a wonderful um, ending remark for for <coughs> the session. Um, I, I, I'm. Uh, I know that you will stay here a little bit longer if somebody has a book to be signed or so, or want to be, have a photograph taken. Uh, but uh, the, the formal uh, part of this session is over, and I think we all
should thank uh, wholeheartedly Donald uh, Trump. <laughs> Thank you.